to any audio. Uh, I'll delete it. Always listening. Um, probably have to turn the volume off. Okay. So to acknowledge the site walk, and it's off, but we're still getting a little feedback. But um, occurred at 4 p.m. today, June 15th, at 240s Gregory. And during the site walk, we only had discussions that related to the orientation of the site, the physical characteristics of the site, and the layout of the site. Present at that walk were Mark Shamba, Matt Lee, Stacy Lake, Donna Wenzel, Eric, Erica Jensen, and Dylan Henderson. So we'll call the meeting to order with uh, thanks for the council members that joined us. I think Jesse Ray's out there is the only one I see uh, from staff, Piper, Erica, Allie, and Jana. And we'll do our roll call live for the first time in two years. Take it from there, Kiernan. What's my name? Oh, Kiernan Lannon. Stacy Lake. Matt Lee. Mark Shamba. And Sherry Harvey. Wow, oh, this is amazing. Okay. And did we lose Mark? Yeah, I, I'm going to talk about that. Um, do we have a motion for the approval of the HARC meeting minutes of May 18th? Sure. I move to approve the HARC meeting minutes dated May 18th, 2022. I'll second. Kieran, yes. Stacy, yes. Matt, yes. Mark, yes. And Sherry, yes. And I will move to approve the HARC chair meeting minutes of May 20th, 2022, as written. Staff announcements. Thank you. Um, it's great to see everybody in person. Welcome back to Rebecca Hall. Um, just a few quick announcements. Um, a couple of months ago, we were contacted by the National Park Service. I think some citizens maybe had reached out to them. And um, Scott, our new town manager, and I had a great uh, Zoom meeting with them a few weeks ago, and we've invited them to come visit. They haven't been here for a long time. Um, they are eager to, to come and um, see Telluride. Uh, I don't have any specific information from them yet. They're, um, they will be notifying us about what their agenda, what they want their agenda to be, um, but I'll keep, keep you posted. I don't know that it will be a meeting or a, um, I don't know what the format will be, and I don't know that the public will be invited or anything. I think they want to come see um, and make an evaluation of Telluride. So, but I will let you know if I have learned any more information about that. Um, after the public hearing items, um, we'll have a couple more things to discuss under board and staff discussion. So I think maybe I'll save some of my other comments um, for that for that point. There are a couple of things we need to talk about then. Um, and then just finally, I'm leaving uh, town tomorrow to go on vacation. I'll be out all next week. I'll be back the 27th. In my absence, Erica will be uh, available for any questions or concerns, as will Tammy if, if you have either one of them. So um, that, oh, and I have the um, public process slide available if you'd like to go over that. <clears throat> yes, we'll do that. And okay. I'd like to acknowledge one other thing. Um, I'd like to read in the record a thanks to Mark Hebert, our alternate who has left town. I've talked to him three times. Um, and he, uh, I think as most of us on the board know, he was not, or he was discouraged with some of his experiences in the town government and not just in, in this board, but some other things. And he's moved to Miami and he's gone. So we now have two seats open and I think Sherry and I term out here in August and September. So. I want to thank Mark for his efforts because he, he was a quick study. He was always a calming influence um, and he did his homework. And so I think his efforts should be acknowledged and appreciated. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. I'm sorry he didn't get to join us in person for, <laughs> for a meeting. So, 
Okay, so we'll review the hearing process um, tonight of the eight steps. The HARC chair, of course, introduces the project. Staff gives a presentation, answers HARC's questions, and the applicant gives their presentation and answers HARC's questions. We ask for 30 minutes or less. Um, the public will be invited then to make comments, which we ask to be less than three minutes per person. There is no dialogue allowed between the public and the applicants and the HARC members for our rules. The applicant may address any comments made by the public in a rebuttal and then the public comment period ends. The applicant may, well, and that's where the applicant can make their rebuttal. Uh, HARC members then will deliberate and uh, vote on the uh, project application. So with that review of the process, um, just a reminder um, for the public. Uh, well, first of all, we'll question if there are any public comments on non-agenda items. We got a public here. Okay, two public. Okay, hearing none, we're just gonna go on to our first agenda item tonight. This is, uh, we need a motion for a continuance. No, we don't. Um, if, I'll, I'll just give a brief um, oh. explanation. Um, so this item uh, is asked to be postponed, not continued because the item was not properly noticed. It was placed on the agenda and so um, it was intended to come back to you this evening, but there was an error in the um, in the noticing process. And I think Mo Trumbull's with us. She wanted to speak to you briefly um, to explain what happened. And so after she does that, um, I, I'd like for us to talk about when this might be able to come back. Hi, Mo. Hey. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to pop in and apologize to the board. Um, it is on me. I had an absolutely crazy series of series of events and missed getting the poster posted on the correct day. And, you know, I know there's been a lot of conversation and interest and passion around this project from the community and the town and the boards and um, I just wanted to pop in and apologize to you guys and say thank you um, for taking taking this back into your hands and we will we will come to you again whenever the schedule works out for it. So we look forward to that. Hey, thank you. Go ahead, Jenna. So um, <clears throat> there are a couple of options uh, to reschedule the item. Um, the first one I will present is probably the least popular. That would be to hold a special meeting. Um, the date, the earliest probably we could do it would be July 6th, which is not ideal. It's the um, couple of days after the 4th of July. So the second option would be to ho hold, hold it on our next regular meeting, which is July 20th. We have several items scheduled for July 20th that I've promised um, agenda time to. Um, so we can plan to have an extra long meeting or we could plan to start that meeting a little bit earlier. I'm thinking maybe at four o'clock. Um, would that be, you discuss it and tell me what is works best for you. Well, I, mean, I think I'll speak to the board with three special sessions, including the work session that we've already held to speed this along. Um, does anybody raise their hand for a special session again? Okay, so how did I know that? Um, and with an early start, um, I'll leave it up to pleasure of the board. Um, you have four applications that night already committed to the private sector, so. Um, I don't know what time that would be, but I think, are we all okay with that? I'm not sure I can make that meeting particularly, so but I'm not sure yet. Okay. Anybody opposed to starting early at four or 4.30? Well, I'll take just a quick step back. I'm not entirely opposed to meeting on the 6th of the special. I mean, I think it combats the perception or at least the expressed um, perception that we're holding that project to a different standard. I think this is a way to show that we're not in fact and that we're open to reviewing the project. <clears throat> okay, any best? I can't participate in, in on the sixth, I know that. But, okay, well, um, I'm just, I just, we, we, we hardly have a quorum now. 
you, Karen, you, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I would have to miss the six. Okay, That's so well. early start is four thirty good enough, or one four, or what do you, whatever the board says, Donna suggested for me. Four is fine. Four thirty. I'm thinking we could start at four. Uh, review the project, break for a dinner, come back and start our regular meeting. Oh, I'm open for it. Okay, well then, then it, if it means we get out earlier at the end, I mean starting it at four thirty just adds another half hour at the end. Okay, right. Okay, we, we can have a quick, if we're just having sandwiches, just a quick dinner, we don't have to stop much, I mean, 15 yeah. minutes. Okay. Okay, Thank so you it very is. Much. So, so do you need a motion? We do not need any action oh. on this item. All right. Really, um, needed to discuss it. Okay, then our last two projects of the evening are, the first one is 240 East Gregory. It's consideration of application for a small scale demolition of a non-rated THS primary structure within the HPOD pursuant to land use code 7203B8 and a small scale demo of a non-rated THS secondary structure within the HPOD per land use code 7203B8 and a preliminary large scale new construction in the historic residential zone district, which will contain more than 2,500 square foot of floor area per land use code 7203A1. It's at block 33, lot 9R, 240 East Gregory. It's the address. It's in the historic residential zone district. Owners are Franz uh, Rossman and Margaret Taylor. Applicant Dylan Henderson of Salt Architects and staff member Erica Jensen. Mark, I have to recuse myself for a professional okay. relationship. <clears throat> See you soon. Uh, somebody can text Karen. Yeah. Okay, um, Erica. Oh, full screen. Perfect. Okay. All right. We are here for uh, to review 240 East Gregory preliminary large scale review. Um, before we start, public comment was received by Brian Wolham and Lori Roddick and Kathy Green. Did everyone have time to review these comments? Um, Brian and Lori's came together. There was oh, one okay. comment. I've made two public comments. Two public comments. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. It is loc the site is located on the south side of Gregory on a corner lot with North Willow to its east. It is in the historic residential zone district and the historic residential treatment area, and it's located in the historic district. The project proposes the demolition of a non-contributing without qualifications house and shed and new construction of a 2,934 square foot house and a 397 square foot garage. A site walk was conducted at 4 p.m. today to look at the story poles, which are seen here. And I've included a, a review of the demolition standards. This falls under demolition of non-rated structures within the historic preservation overlay district. Staff found that the application meets all the standards of demolition, which is expanded upon in the packet. I would like to note that in 2013, HARC approved the demolition of both the primary structure and shed. And I'm happy to answer questions about the demolition of the structures, but I believe the applicant will go into more detail. Condition, condition one is to further step down the building to the south into Willow Street. Condition two is to reduce the mass and scale to be more compatible with the historic neighbors. Um, if you look at the south elevation, it shows that the house does not step down to Willow. And if you look at the east elevation, it shows that the house does not step down to the south. Stepping down the house both to the south South and to Willow would help it relate to its smaller neighbors and overall reduce the mass and scale. Condition three is to further define the entry. The entry is on the west elevation and does have a small porch, but it does not face the street, which is not typical. It makes the entry less prominent. Condition four is if wood shakes are proposed, revise the wood shakes to a more appropriate material. Wood shakes are not allowed per the design guidelines, but wood shingles are allowed. So clarity is needed on what the applicant would like to use. Condition five is to revise the wood 
shake shingle siding and roof to be a more rustic material on the garage. The garage should be a more rustic design to not match the house and maintain a traditional alley look. Metal would be a more appropriate material for the roof and accent features. Condition six is to reduce the amount of paving in the parking area. Two tandem parking spots are proposed on the west side of the garage, which means there is a large amount of paving. Reducing the area of paving would help to soften the space and minimize the visual impacts of the parking area. Condition seven is to provide details on trash and recycle storage. Condition eight is to provide a more detailed landscape plan and planting schedule at final review. And condition nine is to show the location of bike storage at final review. Do we have any questions before we hear from the applicant? No. No question? Thanks for the write-up. Okay, we'll hear from the applicant. Okay, so um, Dylan Henderson, Salt Architecture. And so as, let me just get this loaded up here. As Eric had noted, I took this through, um, Eric and Josephine Thelanius had owned this property previously. And um, we took this through back in, I think 2010 and got, a, got an approval for the project. Um, actually at that period of time, the garage was a two-story element. We had a unit over the top of the garage. Because of land use code changes, we, we had to, remove that unit over the top of the garage and turn it into a single story element for this application. Um, generally, the size, scale, volume, et cetera, is very similar to the previous application that was approved. Um, the difference is our roof line. So we did change the roof line fairly significantly with an adjustment to floor plan. And it um, also sort of wanted to restudy sort of the elevation that we have along Willow and the elevation that we have along Gregory and how you enter this property. I think we were just up on site. So you can see that the approach from Gregory is definitely up Gregory and not directly from Gregory. Coming through that steep elevation past the guardrail and then down a very steep hill from Gregory to this lot uh, would make for a very awkward entry element. And so that's sort of a just a response to one of the condition comments from staff is that I think that the only appropriate um, way in which is the pointer, the center button there, right there. It is, but it's really hard to see on the monitor, oh. unfortunately. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, oh, mm. Okay. Well, maybe I could just point with my hand. Is yeah. that okay? That um, when you're coming up Gregory, this is a very steep incline, and we have a guardrail along Gregory. And the elevation of this lot is several feet, I think almost four feet lower than where the street is. And so um, it really is one, unfeasible to be able to come off of Gregory and step down to get to an entry door that would be facing Gregory. So this entry is facing kind of your arrival approach and uh, just functionally seemed to be the best solution to the layout of being able to enter the project. Um, this is our current condition with the two structures that are being requested to be demolished. And before I get too far, is Chris Hawkins on? He is. Okay. So I think what I'd like to do before I get too far is have Chris present the <coughs> demolition narrative to you all. Um, and then I'll jump in and finish sort of the architectural review portion. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great, hi, uh, Chris Hawkins with Alpine Planning. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen just to go through the demolition real quick. Um, so one of the first things I wanted to point out is that there was a comment made initially in the historic survey um, about the dwelling having a slightly different orientation than the dwelling depicted on the 1922 Sanborn insurance maps. And this is the quote, perhaps indicating that an entirely new building was erected after that date. And um, figure two of the narr demolition narrative really shows that they are really two different structures. Um, you know, given that they, you know, as well, it, it just showed that they 
are not contributing to the district. Um, I really appreciate the extensive work that was done by Eric and Josephine Felinius on this. And if you look at, you know, the ownership of the land in here, which is pretty key up, oh, sorry, I zoomed in too far. Let me back up. Um, the first owner of the property, according to the uh, county assessor data, was in 1930 by Burkaw. And then 1914, Peter Anderson bought the property and uh, as a new owner, you know, so the period of significance was over even before Peter Anderson bought the property. And then there's a newspaper article, which I always love when you can find stuff like this when you're working on things like this, but it, there's, it says, Mr. and Mrs. P. Anderson are building a cottage on East Gregory Avenue. It will have four rooms, et cetera. So this is from 1915. So this is well after the period of significance when the home was built um, overall. And so I think given all the evidence that's here, it's very clear that the structure was built after the period of significance. And then um, some of the other work that was done in the past that include, included a contractor evaluation and Mike Davenport showed it was, in, there was a newer home constructed in 1947 that represents this home. So there's been really two homes built since the period of significance. And just there's, and there are no historic resources on the property overall. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have on this. Um, I'm not gonna get into the demolition criteria for decision, but that's laid out here pretty well um, in terms of having a home that was built prior to the design guidelines and now having a home being designed, evaluated and approved pursuant to the design guidelines will certainly fit better into the neighborhood than the current structure that's there. And we believe it does meet the demolition criteria in whole. If you had any questions on the demolition criteria, I'm glad to answer those at the end of Dylan's presentation. So thank you. Thanks, Chris. We good? So okay, cool. So um, yeah, so I wanted to I wanted to stop there so Chris could sort of describe that so you can see the footprint of the existing buildings on site and then the proposed new location of our new structures. And so you can see the proximity of Willow Street and then Gregory Avenue. One thing to point out is the property line actually extends out into Gregory Avenue. There is an easement recorded where the town. Um, is allowed to keep their guardrail obviously on private property but I think that was one of the confusions about maybe setbacks when we were up on site but um, that is a function of how the property line relative to Gregory is laid out. Here are the existing photos y'all are familiar with what's on site and these are just the floor plans so very simple floor plan basement obviously first level second level you can see where we have the entry uh, coming off the end of the house and then circulation upstairs. Mm -hmm. This is a rectilinear lot, you know, facing from Willow back along Gregory with Gregory being the long side. And so we're as parallel to Gregory as we can and as sort of perpendicular to, to Willow as we can. And so you can see from this layout, the attempt was made in both of the uh, east elevation and in the west elevation to, to honor some of those stepping down that we were able to do. The crossing gable north south with two intersecting gables of east west 
uh, the stepping down to the south and stepping down to the east and stepping down to the west is just a, ma makes for a pretty complicated structure. And so in light of the fact that we're trying to keep these structures architecturally very sort of simple in terms of their own layout, not creating a lot of com complicated roofs, that was definitely the intent of that. And so I understand the comment of the goal being to step down, but when you try and step down to all four locations, things get pretty funky on your roof lines. Um, this is the south and north elevation. So the north elevation along Gregory, you can see how we have the garage position facing Gregory. The entry there is facing to the west, but is on the Gregory side of entry. And then, um, you know, broken up roof forms and trying to do our best to step down to these different locations. On this south elevation facing, um, Meg and Franz actually own the house down below. Uh, again, just trying to get some of this, some of this breaking up of the volume and stepping in where appropriate to, to break up those volumes. These are the two elevations. The top elevation is facing Willow and the bottom elevation is facing West and Gregory there is on the left of that elevation. So our entry is here as noted previously. And then this is our rear elevation facing Willow. Here's a deck off of that side facing Ingram Bridalvale. The roof material, that's, that's a good comment. So. Conceptually, I think what we're thinking, especially because of fire insurance and things like that, is to do a composite shingle as opposed to a shake or a wood shake. So we would be using like a Da Vinci shingle that was, you know, looks like sort of a, a shake, but it's not wood. It's a composite material. The garage, same thing. I mean, architecturally, I, I understand trying to make it a little bit more um, rustic in nature. I, th I think we were just trying to keep a little, this these structures just a little more refined. It is the historic district and we do see more refined finishes in the historic district. So I think that was the original intent. But certainly something we can talk about. So I think that is the end of my presentation and happy to answer any questions. I'll just go to the perspectives while we're chatting. Yeah. Okay, questions? Um, I remember this project. Yeah. And I remember the discussion about uh, access to the driveway. And you had changed that for the better back in the old application. Yes. So can you just talk about on the site plan how obviously your neighbors are concerned about ice buildup and the road, and they were back then and they still are. Yeah. Can you address? Absolutely. So that's a great question. So Willow is really unpassable in the winter time. In the early iterations of this design back in 2009 or something, we had the ability to actually drive onto this site and then drive underneath this building. The comment during that time with Hark was that it appeared then to be a three-story building. And that was true, right? But what we were trying to do is really solve that parking, get some parking underneath the building and then provide some off-street parking um, on the parking pad in front of the house. And back then there was even more hardscape paving in order to have that sort of snow melt driveway. Commentary on Gregory Avenue is this is where the trash truck comes. This is how people access this portion of the neighborhood and that um, it builds up with ice. So that to a certain extent, the ice buildup along Gregory is a public works issue, right? So um, that's not <coughs> something I don't like that Hark would tackle, right? Um, I think that any kind of structure that ends up on this lot at any point is going to cast some shadows. I think we've tried to mitigate it as best we can by having the predominant gable be that north-south gable and then stepping down those east-west gables so we can keep as much sun going sort of through this site as possible. When we were on this site walk, it was noted that several of those trees that are much taller than this structure um, are going to be removed. And so that potentially helps. So from an ice buildup standpoint, I can't comment on that really on, on Gregory, but from a parking standpoint, um, it was a, the, the comment was that we have to do everything we can to provide some off street parking so that we don't end up with cars stacked up on this property and or trying to parallel park along Gregory, especially with Gregory as sort of impassable as it can be when it when it does get icy. And so um, we've provided the one required off street parking space. 
but the intention of that hard, the, the, the hardscape on that western side of the garage is to provide two additional tandem spots, which we're not required to do, but if we don't have them paved with the amount of ice that does sort of build up during the winter time on these north elevations is that we won't be able to snow melt it, and then you wouldn't be able to park it. And so we're providing three parking spaces in this plan. If we had to reduce that hardscape, that would obviously make that challenging. You'd only be able to park it in you know fair weather months. And so um, that was the intent of that. And hopefully we successfully did that. Is there any way of, of meeting in between? I mean, I know you can't um, snow melt pervious paving, but is there any way to increase the buffer of the landscaping or? Yeah, we could do ribbons. You could do concrete ribbons that you heat and then have, um, you know, rocks or planting area between. Mm -hmm. So I did that over at 225 South Oak on Sally's project for the same, same comment was that we were trying to soften that, provide more landscaping area. And that's certainly something that we could look at. Yeah. And obviously the driveway into the garage would have to stay as yeah. standard. Any other questions, Sherry? Yeah, I have a couple. So what the, the first condition Erica has about stepping the building down to Willow Street, is, is there any potential for that corrugated metal element or something with the deck? Or are there any um, architectural features or roofs or anything you could think of adding towards Willow Street that would step the building down? Yeah. but. As for some reason, this isn't advancing these slides. This Piper is, oh, that one. Oh. Stop sharing. You have to point it at the. Uh... We're having technical difficulties. Does this thing like time out from a power I don't know. You might switch it off and, oh, hold on. Okay. Clicked on the wrong one. This all is glitchy. I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. Is that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's just look at these elevations. So, um, <clears throat> oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Okay. So, on this uh, Willow side, it's probably better to look at this elevation. So, I did, you know, when, when we're looking at that elevation and then looking at north south, and this is obviously the east elevation, is this element is stepped down from the primary gable behind. And so when we see other applications that have gone through, it's sort of the distance between the top of that ridge and the top of that ridge that becomes kind of the comment, like, oh, we'd like to see a greater gap between the two. This element, which is a shed roof, does step down toward Willow. And then we do have this deck element, which shows a further stepping down. And so if I go back to this elevation, you know, this feels to me like it's stepping down, or sorry, I'm on the wrong side of the building. It, this feels like it has some of that happening. And then certainly on this elevation, this has some of that happening as well. So could, could the roof change? Could we, you know, increase the height between this peak and that long running gable? I think the answer is yes, we could come up with some of those things. It's a little hard to really, really step it down because then you lose livable area. Right. Um, while we're on that elevation, what is the size of that deck? Oh, that was a good question because that came up. So I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. Right. Perfect. You said nine feet at the walk site walk? Yeah, okay. I want to confirm that because that was a little bit from yeah. up here. So, oh, that was right. Yeah, it's nine feet. By what? Nine feet by 18. Those are all my questions. And just to follow up on that willow elevation where you have it up, what is the distance between the top of the gable and that ridge? Yep, I'll tell you. It's right up there. So three, two, yeah. So that distance in height is exactly two foot two. Thanks. Other questions? Um, 
Well, just as a follow-up, I run that. So, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, I gave you the wrong number because I was looking, I was, I clicked on the wrong point. Let me just tell you what that is again. <clears throat> it's one foot six, sorry. Okay. Yeah. And, and you've been here before, we've had that dialogue of how far you could step yes. it down. So yeah. is it, is it uh, reasonable to step that down to have a distance of three feet or something between the top of that gable and the, and the ridge yeah. versus one foot, another? I think the, the function of it becomes that you either shallow the pitch or you narrow the building. Yeah. And if we narrow the building, I lose them floor area, which is their kitchen, living, dining. They probably not like that. So I'd have to shallow that pitch. And then I get concerned that if you get much shallower than that pitch, it starts to look um, non telluride. <laughs> right. So the answer is I would have to lower the plate. So that was the third thing I should have said. I yeah. could lower the plate. All right. That was my only follow up. Um, okay. And the width of that volume is 18 and a half. Okay. So narrowing it even more would be a little tough. So I would just have to lower the plate. Okay, lower the plate. I got one more. How would you further define the entry? So I have an entry roof here with the column coming down in the corner. Um, I think, you know, it's one of these things, I think in, in practice, right? Like, I think that's pretty defined. I think that'll feel really pretty nice when you're walking along and you see this entry. I think in plan view and in elevation, it just has a flattening effect. I, like, I don't look at this and think that that isn't a defined roof entry element. If we said we wanted to make it more predominant, I would probably put a gable in that shed and try and do something that kind of came across, stepped up, gave a gable and did some detail in that gable end. And I would just try and detail out that roof to give it a little more prominence, maybe even kick that pitch to a 412 and get it a little bit tighter up underneath the sill of those windows so that you read more roof. And then visually, maybe that makes that a stronger element. So something like that. Okay, any other questions? So <clears throat> let's hear from the public. And if you can help me, Piper, uh, see on the screen who has their hand up if they're calling in and we'll call on them here. Again, we ask public comment to be germane to the, to the design guidelines only and, and please uh, keep it less than three minutes. So, okay, Kathy has her hand up. Kathy, please go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, before I was concerned about the shingles that were shown on root the roofs, but now that I understand they're not wood, they're a composite and they're fireproof, I have no problem. I like the complexity of the roof. That's what I get to look at. I really enjoy this complex roof. Um, parking is the biggest issue in our neighborhood. Um, and I like the idea of maybe doing the heated strips, ribbons of concrete and having it permeable in between, but it's really important that we have the parking. Um, it's much more likely that the garage will work in this design rather than in the main house. So I'm very in support of those aspects of this design. Um, the trees on site are my biggest nemesis. Many of them will leave as part of this project. They grow abnormally fast over the last well, they grew abnormally fast 25 years ago for about 15 years after I saw them planted uh, due to a bunch of water leaks in the pipe serving the, this an, antique house. So um, the fact that the trees are going away is to me a benefit and will make other ice, currently icy parts of the road less icy because the trees, even in the winter, the trunks are th so thick that so many of them all jammed together that they make the road icy. So I'm in support of this design. Um, I like the idea of the heated ribbons. And that's it. Thank you. I don't see other hands up, do you? Okay. 
Um, any rebuttal or? Well, I think when I read both of the public comment and I, um, the comments about skylights and things like that, you know, that's, that's something for you all to decide. We talked about that on, on the um, site walk is that the, in my previous submittal on this application, all of the skylights were requested to be on the north side so that we prevented light spill from the south facing the skylights. So that is where our skylights are currently located. So happy to discuss that. Um, setback issues to Gregory, I think we covered that. The property line is actually out in sort of the middle third of Gregory already. So I think that might be part of the confusion about that. Um, everything else relative to parking strips instead of that, it's, that's fine. I'm sure I can work with Franz and Meg to come up with something. Um, they, they're very supportive of wanting to satisfy neighbors' comments. So I'm happy to work through all that. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, comments with respect to Erica's suggestions on one through nine uh, first, and then or uh, of which we know number four would be amended to composite shakes. Um, but any other comments regarding any of those that you want to further discuss or deliberate? I have a just a quick comment. Um, I generally agree with all of staff's um, proposed conditions. I'm curious about. Um, asking him to further step down the building to the south. I don't yeah. see that as being as much of a concern. I agree. It's more of a true side yard. Um, and because of the steep slope, it's even less of a concern to a neighbor. Um, you'd have to have binoculars maybe to see that from, this, from Kids Hill or the gondola. I think the story, to story polls, as always, tell the story and I didn't see where it, it's in a hole. Yeah. I mean, this whole lot and you walk by. So I don't see any problem with that. I, I, I would say that I think uh, as we have traditionally in the applicant acknowledged, we could perhaps lower that um, gable uh, to have more space on the Willow Street side there east um, between the ridge line and that without, as he said, lowering the plate with maybe a foot or two, but mm -hmm. that's the only step down I see. I don't, excuse me, I should say lowering of I don't think it needs to step down either. It's in a hole. I would I would just strike the south and I would agree with all the proposed motions as stated. It's my opinion. Um, yeah, I think this is actually a huge improvement from the last design. And although the last design was a little more contemporary, designy and I don't want to say trendy, but um, this is very simple. I think it fits within the historic guidelines. Um, if, if we included all of these conditions and the only other one I would add would be to consider reducing one of the skylights towards Brian and Lori's house. I mean, the deck is, is pretty big, but it, it, um, it, it's, um, it fits with the size of the house, the east deck. Mark your Mr. Deck. Sorry, what about the deck? I said, I, th I think the deck fits with the size of the house. Yeah, within, it's within, doesn't extend out, yeah. But it's compatible to, you know, it's not an yeah. obnoxious size. So my only comment would be to reduce one skylight kind of towards <clears throat> Brian and Lori's house. Let's throw that across the board. Um, what, um, can you show that elevation that shows those skylights uh, looking north? Either one of the eastern. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Or three, right, Stacy? Isn't there three on the three? Well, there's, there's three, but. One separated. Two are on the east-west gable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> This thing's not really, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I, I think based on Dylan's choice and the clients and the program of what's going on underneath it, <clears throat> if they could reduce that by one, that would make their neighbors happy. Okay. And their house looks yeah, down. They'll agree. Okay, great. That's. Um, and, you're, and we're going to do the ribbon driveway, I guess. Yep. I, I think we can say just further reduce it in Dylan's heard comments and he's 
offered that. So okay. let them figure out how to sculpt it. All right. Would, would the board is, it seems like we're getting near a motion here uh, on number one, be amenable to having that read to step down the Willow Street, be able to allow three foot versus one foot two spacing between it and the North South Ridge. So that's less than two foot reduction. I think that's going to make a great improvement from the street. In yeah. Terms of is that like, feeling what do you guys you three are seems unanimous so okay who would like to make a motion well, hold on I, i've got oh what i think is a fairly major <coughs> discussion item or anyway to me it is um we we've spent time talking about um hr 17c uh similar mass and scale that's where the step down conversations have come from but i'm as concerned with hr 17 d three uh, historic proportions of height and width. And I think on the north and south elevations, the main gable form is quite uh, wide. It's not vertically oriented necessarily. Which one, Stacy? Well, either one. Yeah. Take your pick, the north or the south. It's the same form. Well, the south I'm not as concerned with as it faces south. But along Gregory, that's a substantial element. And it it's even more horizontal than that because what we're not seeing here is that Gregory comes up quite a bit towards the main level. Um, and that ends up being a really horizontal form from Gregory. Um, and historically proportions were vertically oriented. Um, it seems to me that it, there should perhaps not designing for the applicant, but if, if I were to look at this, perhaps there could be a, a, a step back it could be made up by pushing, you know, it's a balloon, right? You push in a little bit here, you get bumps out somewhere else, and that's fine. But if, if there was a the primary gable form and then a lower gable form so that there were two vertical elements, I'm just concerned with how much of a single plane that is along Gregory. Some of those poles were kind of buried in the trees looking in there, but I, it didn't strike me on the sidewalk. That, so basically you're saying it's too wide, or you feel. Well, I mean, just if you look at it here, it's almost wider than it is tall. And if, if the Gregory comes up, it's almost twice as wide as it is as tall. So you, are you saying the, the width and the lack of articulation? Uh, is yeah, I mean, from here, to, one foot. from here to, that's one, that's one plane. And I don't know that, that I was going to ask what the distance is, but it's 35 feet of one plane. I I, I can tell you because I have it here. It's um. But isn't Kathy's house like that? Or is the other it's house? Twenty-five in feet. Twenty-five feet. But I, I and again, I'm not as concerned with the overall width. I'm concerned with the proportion of height to width. I feel like it's a a lot, a lot. I know what you're saying. Uh, historically, that size would be smaller, but contextually, I mean, the other houses around there, the newer ones, do have those wide, long. Do you have any ideas about how to break that up? Or, well, yeah, I threw out one proposal would be to have a a lower gable part way down, right? Like, sorry for sketching what nobody else can see, but if this was broken here, this is, well, yeah. yeah, but you see what I mean. I'm, that's my concern. If, you, you mean it's, it has the same shape, but it drops down? If there was just some articulation course. in the wall where, where, a, where a subordinate gable tapped oh, one okay. half, and yeah. then the other half was the upper gable, that would, that's one solution. I'm like I said. I'm just concerned with the there's lack of historic proportion. I I did. I agree with Sherry. At least right across the street and down the street, those have to be 25 foot gables in the neighborhood on the width. You know what I mean, Kathy's house and I know, and it's a corner lot. But that it's makes it good. unique. It's not a side yard. It, it is as well. I think it is a side yard, but it's. It's a street frontage. So there's other things in play. I just, as I read through the guidelines, that one jumped out at me. Okay. Well, I would go with language such as like consider and have him give him some creativity and see what he shows us. I don't, 
I don't know contextually that it's wider than some of the others in the neighborhood, but it'd be good to see what maybe improvement could make, be made. I don't know, Matt. Yeah, it, I, I didn't notice this before, but I, I agree with Stacy. I think if that, um, that facade had more articulation and the gable was, uh, primary gable was more narrow, portions would be more historic. Because if you look at the east and the west elevations, there's a pretty typical proportion. Great. No, that's, um, so, okay, we get to, we, I'm perfectly fine with a consider. Right. Yeah. Let's do that. Like room to push it well, I, I mean, I did look at it. You know, there, there's stuff going on inside, right? There's a stair and there's some other stuff. But I don't think this isn't, I think it's a pretty, there's just a little give there would, would make that, you know, when we, where we were standing for the sidewalk. You'd be looking right down that plane with no break. Okay. That so keyword some articulation. Okay. Well, why don't you, Stacy, pencil in what you would like that to read and maybe consider some further articulation on that elevation. And are there any other? We fit skylights in the ribbon driveway and amendment to number one. Does number two then go away, reduce mass and scale to be more compatible, or is that kind of what? Would we? I think that's no, we're a bit of what Stacy is. Okay, talking. we'll just so we'll, we'll let Stacy revise number two to refer to the north elevation. The north elevation. Okay. Okay. So now, are we ready to make a motion? Okay. Uh, do, how do you want me to do it for Stacy's going to be number two? Well, you can. I'll tear it off and hand it to you. This is teamwork we haven't been able to do before. What did you just say? He's going to tear it off and pass it down to you. Oh, okay. So I move to approve the proposed preliminary large scale new construction at 240 East Gregory, Block 33, Lot 9R, Town Telluride, based on the findings of the staff memo, dated June 15, 2022, with the following conditions. Number one, to further step down the building to Willow Street per number 17D2 and number 18A2. Three feet is what we've decided. Three feet versus, I think we should say, versus the one foot two existing. So it's clear. Two, two be three feet, I should yes. say. Um, number two, to consider further articulation on the north main gable elevation to emphasize a more vertical proportion as per RE, HR, sorry. HR 17 D three. Thanks, Stacy. Um, a number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine as stated, and a number 10 to reduce the number of skylights towards the east by one as per wait to, to reduce to take away one skylight, I guess, to the east as per HR 25 F. This motion is based on evidence and testimony provided at a public hearing held on June 15, 2022, with notice that sharing provided as required by the Telluride Land Use Committee. Matt, I'll second. Just can I offer friendly amendment on number four? Since it's a composite material, I guess we could just leave it in because it says if they're used, but it seems like we could strike it. Uh... I think we just leave it. Leave it as I is. Mean, okay, just leave it as that's fine. I mean, to be honest, we didn't talk about this, but there's so many trees around here. If you're going to do true fire mitigation, you wouldn't have trees within 75 no. feet of the house. And okay. Wood buildings all around. Just one thing Cherry had said to the east. It's I think it's to the north on the skylights. Correct. Oh, thank you. Um, can can you I revise please revise it? number 10 to to say towards the north? Thanks, Piper. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, how do you vote, Stacy? Stacy, yes. I uh, yes. <laughs> Matt, yes. Mark, yes. Chair, yes. Okay, and then we need a motion on the demo. I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I move to approve the demolition of two designated structures: primary structure five SM dot eighteen twenty and shed THAS number night number one nineteen. Inside the THLD located at two forty East Gregory Block thirty three lot. 
nine hour town to tell you the following finding as stated in the staff memo and the following conditions as stated in the staff memo. This motion is based on ev evidence and testimony provided at public hearing held on June 15, 2022 with notices of such hearing as provided as required by the Telluride Land Use Code. I'll second. Okay, Stacy. Yes. Yes. Mark, yes. Sure, yes. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. See you, Thank you. at the final. Okay. Okay, our last public hearing item. Strange to say that at 624. Our last item. Oh, this forever. Okay. Our last item is lot 40, 400 West Pacific Edition, continuation from February 16th meeting and the April 20th and the May 18th park meetings without discussion. Consideration of preliminary large scale application to accommodations one zone district, which is located within THLD, increase the structure's floor area by more than 25%, result in a building which will contain more than 2,500 square foot for land use code 7203A3. It's lot 40 block six at 400 West Pacific, accommodations one zone district. Owners are Dennis uh, Gigan and the McCarthy Family Properties LLC. Our applicant, Fuse Architecture and Interior, Peter Lundin, and staff member, John Wenzel. Thank you, Chairperson Shamba. Let me make sure my that I have to keep my clicker. I have to keep my mouse clicked on the left monitor, so you can use the. It's super high tech. <laughs> okay, good, Piper. You're good. We're good. Okay. Everybody ready? Okay. Um. So Hark last reviewed this on February 16th. It was. Um, continued without discussion a couple of times since then while um, the applicant worked out some details. Uh, just a reminder that the site is located at the southwest corner of West Pacific and South Aspen Street across the street from the Victorian Inn. It's inside the historic residential, or sorry, it's, in, it's inside the historic district and it's in the accommodations one zone district and the residential commercial and river park corridor overlay treatment areas, as you see here. It's kind of unusual. This site is, um, this is, the blue is the AC1 zone district, but it's also um, across the street from the residential commercial district <coughs> and just north of accommodations two zone district. And then um, it's in the residential commercial treatment area, um, just north of the accommodations. Uh, treatment. So um, there's a lot going on in the neighborhood. Um, the, if you recall, both the house and the shed are rated contributing. Um, the house was built around 1899 and it's significant for its historic integrity, as well as for uh, being a vernacular wood structure from the period of significance. The Sanborn maps show an addition, a kind of funky addition at the rear of the house in 1904 and in 1908, but was later removed. There was a separate one-story house at the south end of the lot, which faced Aspen Street and is no, long, no longer uh, appears on the later, uh, in 1922. So there's been some history uh, on this site. The existing shed didn't appear on the site until after, um, or in 1922 or after. And um, the survey shows that the shed is located very near the uh, west and south property lines. At the previous heart review, it was proposed to be rotated, but now it's going to stay in its current existing location. <clears throat> so um, just a reminder, the proposal is to construct a new 1,751 square foot addition to the historic house. And as I just mentioned, the shed is to be um, maintained in its current location without any addition to the shed. So um, I'll go over the previous conditions from February. Number one was to provide a rehabilitation plan for the historic shed consistent with the rehabilitation standards. There is a rehabilitation plan provided in the narrative, the revised narrative that's in the packet. Um, I, the 
the rehabilitation plans that we're used to seeing are typically elevation showing how each material will be treated. I think this is good information. At final, um, we'll be, I think we'd like to see elevation showing how those stork materials will be treated. Um, condition number two is to provide greater stepping down to the historic shed, street, and alley. So since the last review, the roof of the addition has been lowered by two feet, and these east side dormers have been removed. Um, a stepped gable has been added on the um, north side, and a shed roof has been added on the southern portion of the roof. Uh, there is a slight um, stepping down towards the shed in the back. Um, I think the decks help provide that stepping down. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any significant stepping down to the historic house to the north or to Aspen Street on this east elevation. So Herc might like to discuss that. Uh, condition number three was to revise the mass and scale to be subordinate to the existing structure and similar mass and scale to historic structures found traditionally in the neighborhood. Um, so again, the height has been reduced by two feet. The, the building's tall, narrow form creates an appearance that still kind of seems out of scale with the existing structure in the head and the shed, but not with other surrounding um, newer structures. The applicant's narrative addresses this condition and the revisions that have been made. Um, I will mention that the, the roof pitch has been made shallower, which I think appears to contribute to the appearance of um, mass and scale. And I will talk about that again in just a second. Condition number four was to revise the directional emphasis to be uh, similar to that of the historic house. The vertical siding previously proposed has been replaced with horizontal siding. Um, the dormers have been removed from the east side, which I think helps a bit. Um, the lower east side roof has been extended um, and these changes, uh, the house does have more horizontal emphasis, I think. <clears throat> Condition number five is to revise the stylistic treatment to be visually compatible with the historic house. The materials have been revised to be um, to better complement the historic house. Uh, some shingle siding has been added at the top of the uh, upper level, um, and uh, I'm sure the applicant will go into more of the changes, but a complete review of the materials will be reviewed at the final stage. And then condition number six was to revise the windows to be of a traditional size placement and grouping with vertical orientation. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. The um, windows have been revised. Um, they've been um, simplified. Several have been removed. They are um, mostly vertically oriented. There are a few here on the west elevation that are still um, a, a bit square, but I think overall a, a significant improvement in the in the glazing. Condition number seven was to indicate snow breaks on the west slope of the addition's roof, which has been um, completed. Condition number eight was to revise the deck doors to be no more than two thirds light, which has also been completed. And then there were a few con new conditions that I'll go over. Um, condition number one I discussed uh, about a uh, providing elevations with the rehabilitation plan for the shed. Um, condition number two, I have retained, as I mentioned, um, especially on the east side and towards the south, um, there's not, not great stepping down, but there is some. Um, condition number three is to revise the mass and scale to be subordinate to the existing structure and similar in mass and scale to historic structures found traditionally in the neighborhood. There are a wide variety of structures in this neighborhood of varying mass and scale. So you may could, um, want to discuss that. Um, condition number four has to do with the um, proposed parking plan. So this is at the south end of the lot. This is the historic shed. And um, two parking spaces are required on the site. The proposal is to provide one space kind of between the shed and the new addition 
it would be the maneuver would be sort of um, like parallel parking to access that space, and then another space just directly um, in off of the alley. So, and I think the parking works. Um, I and the planning director agree that the parking works. My only concern is that it feels like this corner of the shed might be um, subject to depending on how good a parallel parker might be who's using that space. So um, you might wanna consider discussing uh, the use of a bollard or, or something to protect this corner of the historic shed. Uh, proposed new condition number five was to increase the pitch of the roof to a minimum of 7.5 to 12. And I, I just mentioned this briefly a few moments ago, back in February, when you first looked at this, the, the pitch of the roof of the addition was 7.5 to 12, which matches that of the historic structure. It's since been reduced to 612. I think here in the lower um, illustration, you can see it a little better. It, it seems quite um, shallow compared to the historic house but also, especially with the other very steeply pitched roofs in the neighborhood mm. in this treatment area. And finally, condition number proposed condition number six was to preserve and reuse the historic corrugated metal roofing on the shed, which is typical on these old sheds. They do have kind of beat up metal roofing that can be repurposed. It helps preserve the character of the shed. Um, a waterproof membrane is typically placed under the old metal and then the old metal is reinstalled on top of it. So that was the last proposed condition. Um, do you have any questions of me before the applicant his presentation? I have one. Um, on your number three, reduced mass of scale to be subordinate to the existing structure. Can you go back to the best elevation view there that uh, shows that John and I may I may have a question. Oops. Uh, it's maybe this one. Uh, yeah, and I yeah, it's good. okay, and and I, I guess we can ask the applicant that. But how many feet taller is it? That's three feet or four feet tall. Um, I don't know if I'll have the resolution. That's all right. I, I'll ask the applicant. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, but clearly, when you say that's, I mean, we're talking height. In your opinion, yes, I you know I, I think the the addition overall I don't believe is terribly massive. It's quite narrow, um, but it's quite long and and tall, yeah. which I think maybe gives the appearance of greater mass than it actually has. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. No other questions. So uh, let's hear from the applicant, Peter. Come on up. Hi, everybody in person. <laughs> this is weird. Uh, Peter Lundin, Fuse Architecture Interior. And I have three um, little presentations that I had submitted to paper to show you um, that kind of tie into uh, some of the discussions that you were just talking about. Um, quickly, just looking at the proposed motion and the conditions, we're fine with number one in terms of finding some more illustrations on the extra elevations. Uh, number four, we're amenable to that. I may request that it's a bollard or other possible protection device. Who knows what it might be? I need to look at that a little bit. Um, and item six, we're good with the historic corrugated metal reusing that. So most of this presentation uh, will kind of circle around number two, number three, and number five, uh, which we felt that we had addressed two and three, um, and then some discussion on number five. So let's see if I can make this work. Uh, so this is a photo um, of Pacific Street just to the west of the current proposed project. Um, uh, these are all three historic homes. So the yellow house, the red house, and the blue house are all historic. So it's something that's unique to Pacific Street, I think more so than anywhere else, especially this block of Pacific Street, is this contrast in scale. So you have 
a small structure directly adjacent to a tall structure, directly adjacent to another tall structure. So um, I think that's hugely important in reviewing and discussing subordinate and height, just knowing kind of what the rest of the block is kind of doing. So uh, just a close up of the yellow house, uh, which is two and a half stories tall. It's one of the tallest houses on the block and it's historic. This is also down the block further towards the Elks building. And this is also two and a half stories tall, uh, just to give an idea of relationship of historic structures, height of historic structures on the block. Um, so that's this. Um, Piper, can you switch to the second presentation, please? Okay, um, so on this one, this is a site plan uh, and it kind of helps show the size of the addition in relation to the historic house that's in front. So to give you some understanding, the house itself is 25 feet wide. The addition is only 17 feet wide. So it's smaller subordinate than the historic house width. The historic house length is 40 and a half feet long. The addition is 30 foot nine inches long. So the addition is less long than the historic house. So it's smaller subordinate to the historic house. The house footprint is 995 square feet. The addition footprint is 522. So it's just slightly over half the size footprint wise of the historic house. So we feel that the addition is subordinate to the historic or main house. Um, also to note as well, the main house is going to be with a four foot Aspen side yard setback. The addition has a five foot side yard setback. So it's set further away from Aspen Street than the house will be. Just scrolling through this, you guys have all seen this within the packet. So I won't spend too much time on this. One thing I wanted to show was that can you still hear me okay with this mic? Okay. Um, this is one parking space, as John was talking about with the tandem spaces. This is the second. And the existing house, or the sorry, the existing shed, after discussion with John, Sam, Ron, the whole works was like, leave it where it is to give as much maneuverability in that parking space as possible. So true technically, if you were parallel parking, you'd have a car <laughs> there. So this shed is a good <laughs> distance away. So we're okay with it, but we're okay also with a protection device if you guys feel necessary. So on um, the Aspen Street elevation, um, as mentioned before in John's presentation, the shed dormers were removed. So it's less mass towards Aspen Street. So it's stepping down to Aspen. We've also extended the shed roof that's down at the ground level to help with that stepping down. It's a very similar um, occasion that's happening directly across Aspen Street. And this is actually shorter than the building that's across the street, across Aspen Street, but it's using that same lower shed roof to step down towards Aspen. And then I don't know if you were able to see it in your packets or if you saw it online, but this one showed kind of where the original roof used to be. And that's in this kind of pink dashed line. So the entire roof went down two feet. The stepping down towards the house stepped down three and a half feet. And then the shed roof off the back is now over six feet lower than it used to be. So it's not just two feet, it's a full six feet lower than where the original proposed roof was. Um, you can see that both on the east side and then the west side of where that is. Um, the house was also moved further, or sorry, the addition was moved further north um, for both the parking as well as to make the house and the addition seem more of a complete package, if you will, so they're tighter together. So not only was the house lowered 
or the addition lowered, but it was moved further north, away from the alley and away from the historic shed. So this streetscape, we'll come back to this in the third presentation I have. It's the materials that we have proposed. Um, there was discussion of the shingles. So I don't know if you were able to see that within your packet, but this is what we have proposed where it's horizontal wood siding and then shingles above. Um, it would be painted a similar color. So it's more of a textural change than anything else. Um, the existing historic house has distinctive shingles um, on it as well. So it's kind of a trying to satisfy that condition of making the addition more relatable to the existing house. That's why we introduced the shingles up high on the addition. So um, Piper, can you go to my third presentation, please? And this one might have scale issues. I don't know if you adjusted the sheet sizes or anything. But... Uh, here's some 3D images, um, unfortunately weren't able to be in the packet, but wanted to make sure that we showed them to you. Um, as you can see from the top two, um, especially the one on the right, um, the addition, you can barely see it back there. And then I don't know if you remember the story polls, Stacy, I think wasn't on the board at that time, but he else was. From across the street with the original old story polls, you couldn't see it. So now we've lowered it two feet. So it's only when you get to like the side, you can kind of glance through and see a little bit. Um, this, you can see kind of the scale of what's going on around it, as well as the hotel that's across to the north. And then I thought this was a great 3D image showing across the street of Aspen, across the depot, across the houses down the block, just to kind of see how this addition fits with the historic house. Again, that idea of, okay, you have contrast between these two historic structures, contrast in that first presentation I showed you of other historic structures on the block. So this addition is a contrast in height scale, um, but it's a similar thing that's going on within the neighborhood. Uh, this is the east elevation the original proposal on top and the now new proposal on the bottom. So you can see how it's dropped and then it's shifted. I wanted to make sure you guys saw that. This is also now on the west side. So you can see where it used to be on top and where it is proposed now in terms of stepping down towards um, the alley and the shed and then dropping the overall mass and stepping down towards the house. And then this was the old streetscapes, which I thought was interesting. So this is that tall historic yellow house. New house, new house, historic, historic. So I'm going to toggle back and forth between these. So that is what we're proposing now. And that's where it was before. So in relationship to the historic house, it's better. And in relationship to the block, it's better. In relationship to the older historic house, it's better. We look at the Aspen streetscape in terms of where the addition was. And then the tallest one in the background is the historic house. <laughs> and then there's the smaller ones in between, which are the newer structures, and then the historic house. If you look at the addition there, the addition there, in terms of its relationship to the historic house and then also to the neighborhood beyond. And then this last image was another thing just to show, and it was briefly mentioned about in John's presentation, we're on the corner of three different, actually, I think almost maybe four different zones. So across Aspen, you've got RC, across the alley, you've got accommodations too. And then is the hotel, or is that accommodations too, to the Southeast as well? Um, it's RC to the East. To this side. That and that's a combination too, or is that a different one? Okay, but as you can see, massive structure that you guys know. These are all duplexes, depot. There's actually another house in there that's not built or not shown on this aerial that I was able to grab. But in terms of the historic house here, and the addition to that house, as I showed before, subordinate in its size, 
and subordinate in its relationship to other things that are going on in the block. So just wanted to kind of give an idea of what we're proposing in relationship to its context. And it's also a relationship to bigger and taller on three sides in terms of transition from one zone district, if you will, to another. So uh, that's all for the presentation. If you have, oh, one last thing, sorry. Uh, in regards to number five, increasing the roof pitch, uh, the land use code for accommodation one, minimum roof pitch allowed is 312. So we're not doing 312 on the main gable, we're doing 612 on the gable for the addition. Um, so we are comfortable with 612 versus the seven and a half 12, just based on it's not the very minimum that you can go in this land use code district. Um, also with that would be next 27, where it talks about roof forms and it talks about 27A roof forms that are similar in form and scale to those used historically. We're adding on to the house that has the lowest pitch on the block. <laughs> so we felt it was more in keeping with the addition to that house to be a lower pitch roof versus all the other steeper gables that are on the historic houses down the street. So that's why we presented it the way we have. It's similar, it does not copy. So it does set a difference between the addition and the historic house. So, and the addition, I think I mentioned, and it's on the plans, is 25 and a half feet away from the alley. So, and then I have any questions? I'm here to answer them. Questions? How far did you move the addition to the north, closer to the historic? Four feet went from 20 to 16 in terms of the space between. You know, it's often a combination of things um, on John's proposed condition number three there, but it, it's uh, I caught the four foot setback of the historic house from Aspen and then the additions five feet. Is there more room to in helping with this mass and scale to move it back further? Uh, right now it's uh, that portion of the lot is 25 feet wide. So we have a five foot Aspen setback and a three foot side yard setback on the west. So that leaves us 17 feet, yeah. which is our addition width. So, yeah. so that's smaller than what you see typically in mm -hmm. a lot of town projects because you can go three and three with a 25 feet but since this is a corner side yard we have an extended side yard setback so. mm -hmm. any other questions i do um can you go to the east elevation you want the streetscape is that work or do you want me to go to the can you go to something that's bigger i just can't see that far away there's the east existing or the original was on top and the new proposals on the bottom okay so looking at the bottom one and the the scale of a person walking up from the gondola why is the corrugated metal at that height and is that a straight line it is a straight line the corrugated metal connects with the down line that's on the existing house so you've got this bottom point as the base for the historic house, we wanted to continue that base, if you will, for the addition so it connected from the addition to the house. It's just that it's taller than a person on your scale drawing, and it goes at a point that's like above the deck. Mm. I mean, it's a material thing. But There's a roof there? Are you confusing the roof? So, no, I'm talking about the corrugated metal. So like when you're coming yeah. up, you're seeing, you have this feeling of like you're in a a lower level and I understand it helps to break up the height but I'm, I'm just wondering material wise if there's things to make it more interesting um, so that you don't have this feeling of walking along a space you know you get that in the depot because the, the buildings are so tall um, so that was one of my questions and the other one I wanted to ask especially since this east side is so visible and I appreciate your uh, examples of the historic homes. 
Um, but what I see with those homes is a really simple window pattern that's like symmetrical and, and yours has a, a little bit more complexity to it. Is, is there a way to, um, I didn't look at the function on the inside of the plans, um, but I don't know if there's a way to, to alter the windows in any way to make it um, simpler and symmetrical. Uh, so you can see on the existing house to the right in the double hung, and there's a double pack of double hung. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a very similar deal to the historic house with the double hung, and then the double hung. It's also a single double hung. So we're doing the single double hungs. These are in smaller spaces like bathrooms. So mm -hmm. rather than having a large window, mm -hmm. we decided to do a smaller window. There's smaller windows in the existing house. Mm -hmm. So we felt that our windows that what we were proposing are very similar to what's actually on the existing house. In terms of like what's in the room, <laughs> what makes sense on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, those are my only questions. <coughs> Peter, the print's so small here, I can see it even my readers, but now that you've lowered the, the bridge of the addition two feet, are we still, is that two foot, if I'm reading that right, above the historic house at the moment? It is one foot 11. Well, two feet. So two feet. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the addition right now is actually calcing at 23 feet. And we're allowed to go to 25 feet. So we're actually two feet lower than what yeah. is allowable for height. Yeah. So within the zone district and the land use code. So okay. Any other questions? Okay. Let's hear from the public. Piper, do you see any hands raised? I'm sharing screens. I do not at this time. No. Okay. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, and I believe the owners are on the call as well. I don't know if Dennis is. On there, I can't. Oh, yep, Dennis is there. Shall I unmute the owner? Yeah, if you can, that'd be great. I don't know if Dennis has anything to add further, but Dennis, you I'm want to talk? <laughs> Hi, this is Dennis. Um, no, I just thank the board for their consideration, um, and um, and uh, thank you, Peter, for the presentation. Uh, thank you, board members. Um, I've been in town you know, for over twenty years at that property. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not a developer. I'm a homeowner um, who is now retired. So I hope to spend more time with all of you in Telluride. Um, and uh, my kids grew up skiing there, et cetera. So we're in for the long haul, um, as is Gar uh, 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 our hopes, you know, that, that uh, uh, you know, uh, you'll consider uh, our request. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. As we go around and comment on Jonna's suggestion conditions one through six, I'd like to just throw out here in reference number three. I first of all, it's, it's improved much over what it was with the contract, the subordination. Well, you can't call it subordinate with the mass and scale of the addition, but I, I, I just know in the name of consistency, we, I can't remember. I can't say any, very many, where when we said subordinate on the addition, it was taller by two feet than the historic house, and it's a full contributing. I know on some supporting, we've even had some that were maybe even, but I, I just, I think the guidelines support something that when subordinate means, that subordinate means lower or and or maybe even equal to as the street goes, because it is narrower to the applicant's point, and it is, um, shorter and it is set back a foot more but I, I can't get by the word subordinate on the height but that's the only condition I had to comment on otherwise I agree with Jonas and I don't know how everybody feels about the roof pitch but I think the applicant made a reasonable point about minimums 312 so let's go around the room and who else would like to comment on one through six before we consider any additional ones if any um, well, wait, and I, I think, um, well, first of all, some of the imagery used by the, by the applicant was of historic principal structures, and he used those to compare with this secondary yeah. addition. I think there's a false equivalency there that doesn't work 
out for me. I'm wondering if there's, there are some historic supporting structures down the block. I think they're probably single story sheds that it's a little tough. I did, I did pay special attention to the streetscape. Some of the other additions, which are true two story elements, again, with much steeper roof pitches. Um, I, for me, the roof pitch is, is substantial. Um, given the fact that the existing principal structure has the quote existing uh, lowest pitch on the block, I think matching that is reasonable. Uh, you know, what the land use code gives, hark, take it away. And we do that consistently with context and neighborhood. With context and neighborhood. Yeah. I will say, with, with regards to height and subordinate, given the immediate context of depot and rc i'm 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 not hung i get i'm hung up but i'm not that's not a barrier to me the the two feet higher than the hmm. um it is lower than the land use code allows it there's been an improvement from the last round i think if the plate if the ridge stays where it is and the plate and the and the roof pitch goes to seven and a half twelve and the plate heights come down not only will that will it alleviate some mass and scale again um and i think for me you know we're getting there others i'll follow stacy so i my its biggest hang up is the change of the lower roof pitch. It doesn't seem appropriate for a building that tall. Um, so I, I think I would be I agree with Stacy if the, the roof pitch was returned to the seven and a half and 12. Um, Lake was lowered. Um, I'm not super hung on it, up on it being taller than the historic building. Um, I do feel that the, the notional step downs are not in the right direction. I, I would advocate to eliminate those and just have a simple gable form where I mean, over the entire over the oh, oh, oh the whole position can you put the elevation east elevation going up aspen right there which slide is that three uh you can do three that one works yeah man i want to make sure i follow you on the go ahead would you restate that you can get this so uh what part do you want me to restate well just the last part about um, I, I don't feel that this, the step downs are significant enough. Yeah. Um, they seem trivial. And, and to the house and the shed? Yes, yes, but both of them. I, I would just oh, eliminate right. them up with their uh, unnecessary complexity and don't achieve the result. If the roof pitch is, is brought up and the plate down, the roof, let's say the ridge stays the same, um, then it's it has been lowered compared to the primary house. It's brought been brought closer to the house, which I, I feel helps step it away from um, what's the back street with the shed. I think it would be simpler. The proportions would be better if it's a steeper pitch, the, the ridge stays the same, the plates are lowered. So it's coming down. Uh, I wouldn't say the ridge needs to come down necessarily. I would just say the eaves. Yeah. Um, I would, um, I would cite guidelines and, and uh, try and be consistent. Um, I, I think interpreting the changes with the guidelines um, makes for a stronger makes for a stronger motion. And I, I wanted to start by commending the design with the separation from the house. We don't often see that much of a distance between the house and an addition. And we don't often see um, a simple deck. I mean, normally there's a covered connector that's usually one and a half stories and um, an addition that's larger, proposed to be larger and, and, and on HARC um, applying the guidelines we try and make it compatible with the historic house. So um, I would, um, you know, reflecting back Mark on 330 West Columbia, which is also, what was that number? Was also one of the few contributing structures in town left in its 
historical setting. Um, in an effort to be consistent, I, I would probably do a little bit of both what um, Matt was suggesting that these intentions to step down aren't uh, effective enough. And, and just to keep it as a simple form uh, is probably stronger and is reinforced in the guidelines about uh, height and width of historic houses. And I would uh, entertain something along Mark's idea that it at least be the same height of the, as the house. My, my other concern was the siding, the corrugated metal that goes up over a pedestrian level. I, I, I think when you look at the guidelines on A30 and A30A about building materials, along with the pedestrian scale, which are C6 and ACC, that it, it would be more appropriate to have a, a stepped foundation material versus one that uh, was aligned with the foundation on Pacific. Peter's got his hand raised. Uh, we were in deliberation. However, it is something new that we're bringing up that you didn't get to discuss. I would certainly love more to of a clarification because Sherry was citing AC and it should be RC oh. for the guidelines. I saw zone district and I. That's okay. It's RC. Just for clarification. RC, so and that's what John cited RC 27. Are you suggesting that sort of on the south southern side of the addition that the formation step down as the street? I think on the, the east, if you're coming up from the gondola, the idea that the foundation material is above your head and it's it's also um, in the middle of that deck. If if that were at a lower level, then that wouldn't appear as tall. I see, what, I see what you're saying. I also do appreciate the way he's aligned it with the historic. And I think that that's a logical place for the datum. And it allows the, the two stories of siding to, to not have a, a I think that's minor compared to, to compared to the height of the addition relative to the house. Um, and I, I think we should uh, aim as a board to, to cite guidelines and not uh, you know, use words like feelings and our interpretations. So which guideline are you citing? Um, I need to find it now because I was at AC and <laughs> I messed that up, so. Um, Kiernan, do you want to weigh in here a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, I tend to agree with a lot of what was said here. Um, I'm always going to be kind of on the side of the addition being in line at very least with with the historic resource um so definitely that would be something i would support and i think the that condition is um <clears throat> appropriate uh and then yeah the the roof pitch situation is also another one i mean it doesn't seem in scale with itself i mean the roof pitch doesn't seem to scale with the, the building the addition so i, I think that does and, and Jonah's memo kind of points to it a little bit too. It kind of enforces the verticality in some ways. Um, I'm perceptual, but uh, um, regarding the materials, I can go out either way on the corrugated. Um, honestly, I'd support it if everyone's in, in favor of it. Um, and then the other thing that no one has come to yet uh the bollard situation i would think it would be more appropriate to toss open to some kind of protective element instead of specifying yeah because it, it does seem like a, a bollard there would seem a little odd yeah like a natural like a painted rock. yellow 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah like a natural exactly rock. We mean. Yeah, I some some just so just, we're just angle, a steel angle on the corner of the building. Okay. I mean, just something. Good point. It's a historic resource, so protecting it is appropriate. But yeah, how how we do it is okay. Yeah. I think we can all agree to that. Okay. Make sure we're rock or steel, <laughs> something natural. Mm -hmm. Good point. Anything else? No, not really. Okay. Uh, Sherry's still searching for a guideline. I will well, go ahead. Matt, Sherry, or, well, I'll just say to Sherry's point of citing guidelines, um, John I referenced uh, RC 27A, which is a little further down the page, but in the in intro to policy 27, it says pitches on primary structures. Now that's primary. Um, and then it goes on to say, although in rare instances, were they as low as 812? So 712, as it, as according to the guidelines, is already shallower than what was what was seen historically. Okay. And it says, although occasionally shed roofs as low as 412. Mm -hmm. So I think, like Matt said, on a building this tall, a 312, it, it just... So it just doesn't look right. historic. I mean, I think we're unanimous on 712. Um, I think where we're trying to. No, I know, but I was going to sign a guy for sure. Oh. Oh, I, I was looking at. Thanks. I, I was looking at um, in the rehabilitation standards on the policy 19. Uh, new alterations and additions. I would just keep it big like that in terms of. Well, I think where we're still that completely unanimous is the height of the ridge. And I like the idea expressed by you two of, of uh, lowering the eaves. But it does say if addition, I'm sorry. I, I just don't recall approving an addition that was taller and calling that subordinate and, and on a full contributing. I remember a couple supporting. But I would also say I'd be okay with if it was equal height, uh, but that's another two feet. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you, considering the amount of, uh, for the sake of consistency, but there, obviously there are more guidelines about it being subordinate, but there is this one that says an if addition would be taller than the main building, set it back substantially from the primary character defining facades. Yeah. So it is set back substantially. He has um, given a lot of uh, leeway and, and preserved the four corners of the historic building. And that's not something we see um, often. So I, I, I do think he gets some credit for that. Um, and I, I would like to approve this uh, if it could come down to match the same height. Well, we're gonna see it again. The final. Okay. Well, but let's get mass and scale out of the way at preliminary, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it could the two, I think Karen and Sherry and I agree to at least equal height. Would be but, ideal. Yeah. Right. Um, can you guys, in addition to the eve and the roof pitch, come to that consensus? Well, I'm pretty good at arguing both sides of something. So, sure. Um, <laughs> but I do see, you know, because this, this is not a flat site and we don't have many of those in Telluride, but because the slope is, the, the site is sloping downwards till the alley, this reads as a full three stories at the alley. I mean, that, to me, that's another argument or a co-argument to bring it okay. down a little more. It's. If, if, if this was a flat side, this would dwarf the principal structure. It's, it's benefiting from a sloping site and it's still taller. Okay, so sounds like we have some consensus there, uh, maybe not unanimous, but um, are there any new conditions? Are we good with John and Six here and with making some? minor revisions here, or maybe some specificity to the number th three with the height and the eave. Seems like number three just needs to say what we mean mm -hmm. about the height, the eave, and then the roof pitches on its own. So 
Anybody on this side of the room want to try a motion? Uh, Stacy? Well, sure. Well, I move. The first two words, first three words are the easy ones. Uh, I move to approve to the August 17, 2022 regular heart meeting preliminary large scale application for 400 West Pacific Avenue, lot 40, block six, West Telluride edition with the findings set forth in the staff memo dated June 15th, 2022 with the following conditions. Uh, one, as stated, uh, to provide greater stepping down to the historic sh shed and street consistent with RC number eight B dot one and AS number three dot A dot four, three, Revise the mass and scale to be not greater than the existing ridge height. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And similar in mass and scale to historic structures found traditionally in the neighborhood consistent with RC number 24 and AS number 3.A. Install an, an approved protection device at the northeast corner of the historic shed to ensure preservation. Um, five, increase the roof hitch to a minimum of seven and a half, 12 to match the historic principal structure consistent with RC number 27 policy and RC number 27A. Preserve and reuse the historic corrugated metal roofing on the shed consistent with RE number 3A. This motion is based on evidence and testimony provided a public hearing held on June 15, 2022, with notice of such hearing provided as required by the Italian Land Use Code. Hearing will second that. Um, just a quick note that we don't approve to a date. So it's just a general. Oh, sorry, you're right. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any so we have a motion and a second. Yes, sir. Okay, Karen, you ready to vote? Karen, yes. No friendly moments? Stacey, yes. Matt, yes. Mark, yes. Sure, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, note that it's 717, um, but we have a few minutes board and staff discussion. I, I have a something I'd like to discuss. Um, and and John has some things too. I went, I recall going on a bus tour. Uh, it was with Bob Mather. Was planning, it was when I was on planning and zoning, but there were HARC members there as well. And we stopped, and we specifically stopped and in front of a number of structures where upper stories and lower stories were in the same plane with a deck. And the consensus was at the time that a deck did not constitute stepping down. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know if we're still on the same page with that. Because we often see three planes of three stories which is by definition, no stepping back, none. In fact, with the Eve, it steps out. Well, my interpretation of the guidelines is that's not enough. Okay. I, mean, the, I just want to make sure. And it depends just, where you are, context, neighborhood and everything else, but three stories just divided by a horizontal board for a deck doesn't seem to, I don't think the guidelines. Okay, I just want to. I mean, I, I might, I'd welcome to hear others, but. By the letter of the guy, I mean, that's including decks is specifically called out in all the treatment areas in, in terms of stepping down as an option of how you get to it. So um, helpful, but the third step, something needs to be set back on this isn't top that a deck where then the, the level steps back from that. I would not where it's up and the deck protrudes. It yeah, I mean that I think that's a matter of interpretation. I don't think it spells it out that clearly. Well, but I'm I'm just it <laughs> seemed black and white to me on that bus tour. <laughs> and and it, we haven't doesn't seem like we're going that way. That's the way we're interpreting, interpreting things. I just want mm -hmm. some clarity on that. How do you see it, Matt? Um, I, I think story a, plane. A, a deck definitely can provide you. Yeah. Provide yeah. It. Okay. A lot depends on how it's articulated and whether it's a solid, Especially the lower. solid railing, slower. In most cases, I think there's still, my, my interpretation is there still be some setback. It just can't be a three-story plane with a horizontal board. I don't know. Good question, though. Um, Donna has something, and I have something. Um, but John, you go first. Or actually, I think you have two things. I don't know. 
Um, so the thing I wanted to uh, talk about was um, some upcoming land use code amendments that we're proposing. Um, the town manager has encouraged us to, to move forward with some um, proposed changes to the HARC section of the land use code, which would recategorize some of the HARC um, application scale. And um, I, I don't know how familiar any of you are with that section of the code, but it's um, it's confusing. There are, I don't know how many different scales. Well, there are four scales, but how many different categories within each scale. Um, it's based, the scale of the application is based on the zone district, whether it's in the uh, historic district or not. Um, uh, if it is a certain percentage of uh, floor area that's being added, um, if it's over or under a specific amount of square footage total, uh, the completion of the project. So there are a lot of criteria that determine which, what scale a project uh, is. Um, as we've seen lately, there have been some projects come through specifically at small scale that are outside the historic district that are very simple uh, that we think could probably move to perhaps a chair level. Um, there are also, uh, what we're looking at most specifically are those projects that we review outside of the historic district that often take far less uh, time and scrutiny. The guidelines are less stringent. And as you may know, we have about a nine or 10 month waiting list right now for heart review. Um, I think you know, given the level of experience that we have on the board and staff, I think that we would all be um, capable and I hope comfortable with making some of those changes um, to, to um, uh, expedite some of the reviews that we get that often end up before the board that could very easily be done by the chair. Uh, so given that, um, we are working on that right now. Um, my question to you is, uh, the process would be, it would be uh, reviewed by HARC with a recommendation to PNZ. PNZ would make a recommendation to town council who would um, make the final decision on those amendments. Um, we're looking at perhaps a joint meeting with PNZ to go over the amendments. And I'm wondering if August 25th would be convenient for the board to meet with PNZ. Would it be allowed to be hybrid on the 25th? Yes. Um, okay. Is there an example that you can cite that we've already heard? Yeah. Yes. Um, was it last month or two months ago? There was an addition on 260 North Davis. The house yeah. is outside the historic district. Oh, the Luke's house is project. not to start Luke's project. It simple. Um, it's an addition. Um, it was very straightforward, and um, I don't believe it took the board long. The chair reviews similar projects. Um, because of the total final square footage, it bumped it up to the small scale. If the house, if the existing house were smaller, it would have been a minor scale. So um, things, things like those that seem to take unnecessary time from the board. Can you think of another one, Erica, that um, um, I had a list yeah. when I was working on it the other day. 774 Primrose. 774 Primrose was a, an, an addition or alteration. Construction, but new construction outside the resort. Oh, on the Primrose extension up in the new subdivision, um, there was one several months ago that the chair reviewed because it was less than 1500 square feet above grade. The one across the street was slightly larger, but came to the board uh, for review. So you can already elevate. Yes. Can't, can you simply de-escalate or <laughs> no. de-elevate? Isn't, it, isn't it your choice? No. It is not our choice. Yeah. We can elevate, um, we can elevate any application, move it up, in scale uh, for review, but we cannot de-escalate. Well, I, I'd look forward to seeing the language they're proposing particularly about which ones even staff can decide 
without even going to the chair. I mean, I don't care if I hear 10 projects on Fridays. Right, so as you know, um, Mark, as being the chair, um, things like- um, Today, Friday, the antennas. Antennas, the what am yes, I looking at that? Placement for? of antennas on the Elks building the is name. a chair level or which is- And I've done this at least three or four times. I did it once for you too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no alteration. Staff is not allowed to do any alteration to any historic structure. Mm -hmm. That's including like replacing a non-historic door or replacing roof materials or things that are uh, don't affect the character or historic um, integrity of the property, um, which take 30 seconds at the chair, but perhaps staff could do and relieve some of those items. So will we see this language next month or proposed language, do you um, think? I, I think it will be August. Okay, yeah. oh, 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 at this joint meeting. At this joint meeting. Okay, yeah. all right, everybody good with us? I will also be remote, but I can join. Okay. I likely can't be there. That should be the date of one of the museum's biggest fundraisers. So I don't, I don't think I should think I can be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Do you, do you support this general? And my, my view is always, uh, I guess, to quote W, you make the laws and you execute them. <laughs> but I don't have <laughs> enough uh, self confidence to, to say what's right. I'll just do whatever you tell me. I did think the review of Luke's project that was uh, was good. I thought that the location is visible. It's in a. Um, it did change the appearance of that corner. So, so maybe I wouldn't cite that one as an example. But how about the one? Oh, I think it was nine nine nine, or not over on. Um, but I trust you, and I know you have the. It's strength of, of all of the planners the that construction I, or was it remodeled? you know from my davenport to no no, no that's bob new, that's new construction. jonna's got it i i trust jonna mm -hmm. to uh not let things slide did you, even Matt, if did it you takes more time so okay i would be in support of it okay anything else that you have I, I, when we when i present this i will bring you examples with photos yeah. of those projects that i think could probably yeah. move in scale mm -hmm. Um, j just uh, FYI, I don't think any of the large scale projects should be moved. I think that those are all yeah. appropriate as large scale um, because they are large, they're historic, they're, you know, um, they're significant projects that I can't find any that I wouldn't have as large scale. And, and, and certainly anything in the district, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did you have something else? Uh, I think we we talked about um, a new date for redo, um, so that was that, I think okay. that was all. I'd like to make a proposal um, for the board to comment on tonight. And before I ask that, or before that, I'd like to ask. I didn't listen to town council. Did they? Uh, is there any traction with um, widening PNZ Hark application restrictions to be in the town limits to expanding it to? Yes. Uh, what, what, I didn't hear what, how, what was the result of that? Um, the result was that the a change to the requirements to serve on HARC um, would require an amendment to the town charter, mm -hmm. which requires a, a, a vote of the citizenry. So there's no election planned in the town for this year. The recommendation was that it be included next year when we do have a regular election scheduled to avoid additional costs of up to ten thousand right. dollars okay so um the the um, request would be to allow probably two hark members to not be um from not be required to live in town as they are okay now. but this wouldn't be on november's ballot no there and this is, is no not November. for PNZ. This is just for Hark. No, it is no for Hark. No oh, there's no town. There's no right. town election. Yeah, yeah. In okay, November. never mind. So, well, um, it would be for Hark, PNZ, and the Board of Adjustments. Because we may have two members by August, and we can't find. We haven't found all of it for a year and a half. So I don't know what's. I mean, if you can't find one in a year and a half, how are you going to find four? You can make it like jury duty. Jury duty. Okay, never mind. Um, I'd like to make a. There are a couple architects in town. You know, I, know, I talked to them. 
and uh, no traction. I'd like to make a proposal, and this is very serious. I, I just feel um, so outraged that for the fourth time this year, um, we have applicants who, for whatever reason, at the 11th hour, pull the plug, whether it's noticing or other reasons. This is four times this year, which is an annualized rate of eight times with nine months of backlog and dozens of applications that are probably compliant and ready to go through here um, that we finished at 7.15 and it's like, okay, for the end, we finished at 7.31 at the time and eight uh, another time. Uh, and, and this is mostly because of somebody canceling at the last moment or being disqualified. So my proposal I'd like to briefly discuss here, and I, John, John, John and I have talked about it, and it's the name of efficiency, just like this first item, um, but bigger, is that uh, we're not doing a service to this town if we allow them just to come back at the next meeting. And so I would like to propose, and I'll throw it out there for a thought, that if you as an applicant um, foil your application for whatever reason to um, in, in so that it is too late for staff to plug in someone else, you're already agenda sized, but it's too late to plug in somebody else that's sitting there with ready to go for nine months, that it'd be a minimum of 90 days continuation, three months. And I think a thousand dollar fine. Um, I was going to say 10,000, but that's how I feel about it. 90 days minimum. This, we cannot have this. How is this fair to the community? And it's, it's just, it's just not. So reactions, other thoughts, alternative thoughts. I think in, in principle, that's a, fair idea I, whether it's two months or three months i'm not sure okay um, but to not make it easy for someone to do that yeah i mean they have to be responsible they're professionals i don't care what their excuse is put a sign on the wrong lot i mean whatever it's unfair what does john feel about this as far as the ability to um deal with the calendar and would, would this make it easier for you make it more complex I, I don't I don't think it's going to make it either easier or more complex when someone fails to uh, well for this situation the tonight when someone fails to notice I guess um, we can't continue it so it you know you're, you're not continuing it to a specific date um i don't know i feel like there are legal implications here and maybe ali wants to weigh in i don't i don't know that we can impose a fine but yeah no the fine won't work unless we amend our i'll give up code, on the fine but... <laughs> but look i'm just looking to be fair to the community and we're not being responsible by allowing this to happen four times in the as an annualized rate of eight times in a year with this kind of backlog, it's irresponsible. We could have moved two other projects through we at, at this meeting, this or maybe or three. Never. I mean, in my what twelve and a half years on this board, we haven't had this. Like, I, I agree. This has suddenly is like been a yeah. huge hiccup. Mm -hmm. But I also think we have come a long way. We've started our meetings earlier. We are more efficient than ever in terms of the staff um, paperwork and going through it and getting through items. This is like. I'm sad when our board will dissolve because I think we're doing great, but uh, I think we've given a lot and um, it's unfortunate. It's the only word I can come up with because I don't feel like it's particularly blame, but I, I do think it, it is unfair to the other people in the queue and what this does to the applications even. Well, the challenge in writing the language for, and again, with Ali and Kevin would be, and John's input would be, what is that language so that it is not too late to plug in another applicant who's standing ready for nine months and it's sitting there. So because staff has to have time to write their conditions. Well, well no, just... the, the concern is that the notice has to be mailed 15 days before the meeting. And so if um, that deadline passes and then someone um, either says they haven't completed the noticing 
or for some reason can't uh, you know appear at HARC, then there's no other chance to it's too late to, to well at least it sends a, a signal that here are the rules and you need to follow them but we could and and i would want to discuss this with Allie and kevin but um we do send out noticing instructions to applicants with the deadlines and we could perhaps say that um you know, failure to comply with the deadlines may result in delaying the project up to 90 days or something like that at the discretion of HARC. I mean, I don't mean to give you more work, but is there any chance staff could give them some red light warnings like this is coming up? Have you gotten it done? Have you printed these things off? I mean, I don't to babysit them, but you know how the doctor always sends you all these like texts. Well, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's an error in noticing this time, but there have been plenty of other reasons and justifications yeah. applicants have had for last minute. Twice this year. Yeah, so. And we don't even, know, even know all the details. I mean, I feel like some of those were complex issues and projects and stuff that came up with further review. And because you guys are such sticklers, it's true. Other, other planning directors, is, we, so, that's why we don't have this, you know? So there, as I see it, there are two ways that you can fail to um, appear at HARC when it's your turn. One is to fail to notice properly. There's no cure for that. And the other is um, if you've been continued to a specific date, but you're not ready for some reason, or you're still making changes or something comes up, then we have time to bring someone else right. on the agenda. We know that generally well in advance, there's no additional noticing required. And so we have time to, to uh, allow someone else to get on the agenda. So it really, to me, is the, the, um, the problem is the failure to notice. And like Sherry says, this doesn't happen. <laughs> it just rarely has happened. It has happened too much this year. And I don't know why, but... Um, Perhaps it's because everyone is too busy and trying to keep track of. Right? Is it something that just as, as a board we can just um, we can continue them to a, if three months out? Can we if it's a if it's a temporary problem? Can we resolve it that way without? Continuing? Well, I think we could, but three out of the four times were not public notices. In my recall, year to date, it, there were some design issues or whatever. They they took a spot and then and they couldn't stole do it. it they stole yeah. it. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like, it, yes, we could, but it just seems like it ought to be a rule that applicants are aware of because awareness, if it's in writing, mm -hmm. to me, causes people to give it more serious thought than, oh, well, they might push us out. Maybe we've got a sad story. They won't push us out as far. Might, I don't yeah, want to get into that. 90 days is a more severe penalty than a thousand bucks. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I forget the money part of it, but... <laughs> Uh, we we can't continue anyone who doesn't meet noticing requirements. Am I right on that? Yeah, that's why we didn't continue. Right. right. But so I don't, I don't know that that, if that's what you were proposing, that I don't know that that legally would work. But I, I want to clarify too. Um, just because it's on an agenda, let's say it was a project was continued from a couple of months ago and it's on the agenda. It's required to be on the agenda because it was continued to this specific date. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's taking a space from another project. Mm -hmm. It is required to appear on the agenda, but there's no limit to the number of items that are on the agenda. So if, again, like I said, if I know that that project that has was continued and has asked to be continued again to a later date, we have time to put another item on the agenda, that item that was continued is not taking a space from someone else. Right. But there are circumstances where it has, and there are circumstances where it has, but typically it, it doesn't, and it does. We do have time to bring up another project. So, the be, just because it's on the agenda and says it, it uh, it's being requested to be continued, doesn't mean automatically that it's taking someone else's place. And generally, I try to provide some background information about why it's requested to be continued. So. Um, we, we we always do our best to get as many applications on the agenda as we can, and th uh, accidents happen. I mean, people make mistakes. I've made several this week, so. <laughs> um, well, anyway, we finished before eight o'clock three times, and 
And I think with all the people standing out there that have projects, it's just not fair. So could you at least have get them, uh, Kevin or Legal Alley, to give us some suggested language and see if it's somewhere, something that we could get consensus on? We can discuss it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, Sally. Any other discussion to you guys? No. Okay, the score is, I don't know, I'm not looking at my phone, just teasing. Well, let's adjourn at uh, 7.39 p.m. Thank you all. What is it? 7.41. Well, we had to argue about the time. It's okay. <laughs> All right, have a great weekend. Good seeing you all. Safe travels, Donna. Thanks, Mark.